एट नाइन एंड टेन वाव नाउ रॉ साहब विल पे मी टेन अनाज फॉर गेटिंग बिटन बाय टेन मॉस्किटोज This was one of the early experiments performed by Sir Ronald Ross that led him to discover the mode of malaria transmission paving a pathway for a Nobel prize in 1902 but this was not where it began let's take you back in time thousands of years ago with the advent of farming an encroachment of humans into the lives of mosquitoes the arrival of malaria marks the beginning of one of the oldest diseases known to mankind in 400 bc the greeks living near marshlands when seen with characteristic poor health fever and enlarged spleen believed it to be caused by miasmus or bad air even the term malaria comes from italian word mal area meaning bad air today we know malaria as a life threatening disease caused by parasites that are transmitted to humans through the bites of infected female anopheles mosquitoes it is seen in many tropical and subtropical regions it reached india 3000 years ago and has wreaked havoc ever since claiming millions of lives even today the situation is so dire the number of cases has reached approximately 228 million globally as a matter of fact 19 countries in sub saharan africa along with india carry almost 85% of the global malaria burden As per the latest data the tally of India's malaria cases has reached up to 1.24 billion in 2018 seven states Jharkhand West Bengal Uttar Pradesh Chhattisgarh Odisha Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh contributed to the maximum number of cases and deaths due to malaria in India However all hope is not lost The incidence rate of malaria declined globally between 2010 and 2018 from 71 to 57 cases per 1000 population at risk. India registered a remarkable 28% decrease in malaria cases and 41% decrease in malaria related deaths in the year 2018. In 2016 India introduced its first national framework for malaria elimination 2016-2030 All about it a little later Let's introduce you to our little Guddi Guddi is an 11 years old Indian girl who's poorly nourished and often catches cold during the changing season hailing from a very poor family she lives in a densely populated basti of eastern india with her parents and five siblings she regularly goes out to play in the evenings jumping around in the puddles of clean water formed soon after the rain The other evening she got bitten by a female Anopheles mosquito which itself was infected with the malaria causing plasmodium Given her interaction with her environment mosquito and the plasmodium Goody acquired malaria through the mosquito bite Apparently however she felt healthy unaware of the treacherous multiplication the plasmodium was undergoing inside her liver cells as the plasmodium reached her rbcs and cyclically ruptured them she developed symptoms like fever chills sweat headaches nausea vomiting body ache and malaise Because of Asha Didi's regular visits to them under the anti malaria drive her family was aware of malaria she was appropriately diagnosed at the nearby phc she underwent a complete drug therapy specific to the species of plasmodium curing her of the infection and preventing the symptoms to progress into severe ones 
The complete drug therapy also protected her from future relapse. The anti-malaria drives have been conducted in our country under the genesis of various government programs. The efforts began soon after independence with the National Malaria Control Program in 1953. This was followed by various program in the years 1958, 1977, 1997, 2005 to name a few. In 2016, India launched its first national framework for elimination of malaria in congruence with the Global Technical Strategy for Malaria 2016-2030. It defines various milestones in reducing the burden, aiming to eliminate malaria by 2030. India further pledged to achieve this goal by 2027, three years ahead of the regional and global target. Considering annual parasite index as the primary criteria for categorizing the Indian states and union territories into four categories, the National Framework for Malaria Elimination has implemented category-specific phased interventions in the country, leading to a marked decline in the burden of malaria. This journey of malaria control has been full of challenges, persistent as well as emerging ones. Globally, the lack of sustained resources, emerging resistance of plasmodium to antimalarials and mosquitoes to insecticides are indeed the pertinent ones. Malaria burden, like many other diseases, is like a tip of an iceberg, where many people who are infected with malaria parasites remain asymptomatic or undiagnosed and are therefore invisible to the health systems. Additional to these, India has to overcome the challenges of poor sanitation and socio-economic condition of majority of population, surveillance-based issues, as well as data discrepancy. Holding over 50% world load of BVIVAX in 2015, better diagnostic and screening tests especially for the detection of BVIVAX is rather essential as the current tests are less sensitive to it than P. falciparum. For the better future of all the good deeds and good do's, we envision an ideal Pradesh deriving its name from the model health system it follows. It functions incorporating the sound strategies of prevention and intervention, laying special focus on provision of intermittent preventive treatment for infants and pregnant women in malaria endemic zones. Ideal Pradesh celebrates Anti-Malaria Month every June for spreading malaria awareness and distribution of insecticide-treated bed nets at the village level. The healthcare workers, along with medical and paramedical students, visit the farther corners of Ideal Pradesh in their mobile malaria clinic for the same. Conducting screenings for detection of asymptomatic cases in the high-risk months of June, July and providing primary care to those affected. Their model health system is based on the high-risk approach, with research especially targeted towards proper diagnosis and screening. Post-recovery follow-up for counselling and monitoring is in place with programs for nutrition and rehabilitation. Ideal Pradesh is an environmentally engineered place which has annually repaired roads, rainwater harvesting, lakes, ponds and paddy fields having Gambusia affinis fish etc and thus provide a healthier atmosphere for Goody and her friends to grow. It has safe playing fields, proper sanitation, a 24-7 malaria hotline and is free of infected female Anopheles mosquitoes due to the use of entomopathogenic fungus on outdoor and indoor surfaces. Along with this, the availability of the Malaria Mobile app helps not only in spreading awareness but also in locating nearby PHCs and government-approved pharmacies 
that are the only places which provide anti-malarial drugs. This helps in providing quality medication, surveillance, registration and tracking of cases. Living in Idilpur is not a thing of dreams but is very practical and possible by the determination of policy makers, implementers and the people because it is the people who turn a house into a home. So this was our infinity war with malaria. But our question is, is it really necessary to kill all the mosquitoes? Are all of them actually our enemies? Hmm, now that's an interesting one. For now, we'd want you to park your thoughts on this till another session of discussion.